Leland, what's up, man? Isai. Nice to have nice you on the show. Nice to see you. This is the Alchemist Mindset Podcast, my very first episode. Uh, what I strive to do on this podcast is interview, you know, like-minded individuals, either creatives, entertainers, scientists, teachers, whatever it may be, and just kind of break down and, you know, take their mindset and give you guys a lot of dope information and just tactics on life and getting started, whatever it may be. And I got a very special guest on today, my boy Leland. Thank you, thank you. He's uh, actually one, probably one of the best videographers I know. Uh, watching his content these last couple months to a year that I've known him, I really, it really opened my eyes personally to how much you can really do in video. And it just, he's just a killer. Like he's just straight fucking, straight, just straight savage. killer, straight savage, <laughs> straight thank savage you. behind the camera. Thank you, and uh, you know, he's one of my personal mentors as well in video. He teaches me a lot, and uh, well, super exciting. Was, thanks, so thanks for having me on the show, man. Uh, yeah. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So tell me, like, tell me a little about yourself, man. Something I don't know. Something these, you know, the audience don't, don't know about you. Uh, Where'd you grow up? Where are you from? I grew up in Littleton, not Littleton, Indian Hills, Colorado. Just right in the front range. Nope. Miss it. Uh, quiet, growing up in the mountains, which was nice. And then moved to the uh, city when I was 17 and started shooting. So. Wow. So you've been shooting since 17 years old. Five years. Five. Know. Five years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What well, was your Go ahead. Six years, yeah. Six years. Professionally five. By professionally, I mean getting paid for it. Wow. <laughs> for five years. Sick. Yeah. What was your first camera that you had? What? What was your first camera that you had? Uh, first camera I had was a Nikon D3100. Whoa. I miss it. Shouldn't have sold it. <laughs> you shouldn't have sold it? <laughs> shouldn't have sold it. It was bad. Oh, God. Why'd you sell it? I was make. I was selling it to get a new camera. Oh, so Worked progress. Great. Oh, it was a good thing then. And then I got into the T4i, which was nice. And then I went to Warren. Yep. Good camera. I love that camera. I still have it. <laughs> and I went to Warren Tech um, and then got a slew of cameras there, which was nice. Uh, and then just kind of gravitated toward the, uh, the big cameras. Nice. So. And so did you always start with video or did you start with like graphic design or photography first or did you go straight to video? I started with photography. Nice. Um, my grandma was into it and she got me into it. And then like when I was 13, 14, I got my own camera for my parents for Christmas. I just kind of started in motocross <coughs> photography. Nice. And then uh, just kind of went into editing some dope motocross videos. Sick. From like way long ago. Holy shit. So then you discovered that you wanted to do video and you liked video a lot more. Yep. At that point. I, uh, that was when YouTube was really starting to get pretty fairly big. Like it was big at the time, but like more content creators were making more interesting stuff. And there was this, con this one guy named Devin Graham who... Uh, is a personal hero of, hero of mine, yes. and uh, I loved his camera movements, and I've always been a fan of cinematography. So I was like, I want to learn how he, how he does that, and he used a glide cam, and I was like, that's it. That's, that's it. That's my <laughs> tool from now on, and I've used it probably on every shoot. Sup, Sam? Um, yeah, we got the squad rolling. And, as well. uh, <laughs> we got the squad coming in. On the every shoot, cast. I've used that glide cam. Sup? Um, so yeah, that's where it, that's where it all started. Nice. So were you always into like that artistic creative side like in the photography and video or like how did you like how did you know like you liked it and wanted to continue doing it? Uh, I mean growing up I was more into art like drawing and clay making all that kind of stuff um, and I really want to get back into that but I started doing photography because my grandma got me into it and I just continued on to it because, continued with it because it was just so fun to me. Nice. Um, it was just something that really captured my your attention, life, like my, your life, like you like, you yeah. like, you're, it was one of those things where like, I like this, I want to continue doing it, it's my shit. Yeah, and people started giving me like some, like good feedback and like some, oh, you should continue doing this, and then I did, and now it's my job. Nice. <laughs> and you, uh, you didn't go to school at all for anything at all, or? I went to Warren Tech, but I mean, other than just him giving me a camera and my teacher, Mr. White, Senior Blanco, um, he uh, just gave me the camera and the editing software, and that's really about it. Wow. And I just kind of did my own thing. Nice. So that was, that was lit. Yeah, that's awesome. Say these days. <laughs> <laughs> that was very lit. So I so from that point, you know, being 17 years old with a camera in your hands, doing photography and video like that, um, how long did it take for you to kind of start to master your craft and you know get paid for your first gig? So from the point you were 17, you got your first camera. What was your first paid gig after that? First paid gig. Well, first like big, like step away from the usual motocross and like small short student films yeah. was a music video with Priest, who's one of my biggest like clients nice. and one of Priest, the bigger, yeah, hell yeah. One of the bigger uh, artists out here in Denver. Um, 
And that was, at the time, free because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I'd never shot a music video, I never did anything. And then after doing some work with him, um, it just kind of snowballed into just more people hitting me up. And my first paid gig was, was with this artist named Tony Neeks. He's a really Tony cool Neeks. guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, like, acts kind of like his music a lot. Um, hope, hopefully to get to shoot with him soon. But uh, that was my first paid gig, and then after that, it just kind of snowballed. Snowballed And then there. right after that, I'd say in January, this guy named, you may have heard of him, <laughs> Trev Rich. Um, Ooh. <clears throat> hit me up, was like, yo, how much would you charge for four videos I'm like. And this was how, when you were how old? This was like 18. 18? Like, oh, wow, okay. just before I was 18. Uh-huh. Um, and I was like, I gotta give him a number. See what happens, I'm like, two grand. He's like, done. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, wow. At, like, two grand for four videos is horrible these days, but like, starting out, that's... You were like, fuck yeah. That's amazing. Um, for only being, doing like three or four music videos beforehand. And then him and I just like knocked it out of the park with these awesome videos that like just solidified just some of the best memories I've ever wow, had. Wow, since 18 too. Um, and then after those just kind of rolled into more clients and then me just reaching out to a little bit more people and it just kind of, yeah. Wow. Kinda, it's more of a word of mouth thing, so. Yeah, so the marketing, the best marketing that's been, you know, work, that worked best for you is definitely the word of mouth snowball definitely. effect. Yeah, for sure. But. Um, soon, with starting this company and getting the LLC all straight and ready to go, I'm going to start doing a lot more uh, reaching out, advertising kind of stuff. Nice. And bringing in more creators and writers and shooters and like Just this whole, whole team. solo thing. Actually building a company. Yeah. Build an organization. And like having a budget to work with um, with clients instead of just showing up doing a home shoot. So. Nice. Sick, man. Yeah, so tell me a little bit more about that your company that you're starting. Um, company that started it is called Sonder and Mori, which are two very important words to me. You should look them up later. Um, yeah. and so for, for me, anyone else watching that doesn't know what that, what those are, what is, what is that? So, you will find these two words on YouTube, just search Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows, and that's all you gotta know. Um, and you'll find those two words on his channel. Um, but with this company, I'm gonna more focus on hiring new people. Mm -hmm. to help shoot, to do behind the scenes, do editing, that kind of stuff, but also focusing more on bigger clients. People who want to pay for ideas that I come up with, mm -hmm. but also who have the money to invest in like campaigns and actual shoots. Gotcha, um, okay. That will allow like props and locations and actors and models and all this amazing stuff that you always like a, see. So like it's real production. Yeah, like an yeah. actual production, mm -hmm. so that's nice. Nice. And what was your biggest, you know, why did you decide to move that route um, to, as you were you doing normally, like just doing videos and stuff like that? I wanted to break that cycle because it was just doing the same old, same old. Um, getting low payment videos. It's like, I love working with the people I work with, but at a certain point you got to like evolve. Yes. Make yourself like valuable to what you know you're, you're worth for price and what you can do, what yeah. you can offer. Um, and I just felt like this year was like a, like last year was a very transformative, intense, going through like shit that it wasn't about. Yeah. And then this year I'm like, I just need to start the business, stop delaying it, and I did. Um, and it just was like kind of time to, like after doing this for like three years straight, it's. I've, I've been on a plateau for a year and a half, so I might as well hmm. go to the next one. So. Yeah, so you're able to recognize like, you know, I'm not really, I want to keep moving forward and keep moving up and kind of what I'm doing right now is not doing exactly not doing it like I was at one plateau and I stayed there for a little bit too long and then now it's, uh, now it's climbing the next plateau so. nice so with these you know these five six years of you doing video you went from the point where okay I'm doing this you know BM, BMX motorbike stuff from free to now to the next stage of getting starting to get paid you know doing music videos everything yeah. like that and now you're on the point where you're doing all right I'm gonna start building my company yeah. building my organization that's really sick, man. Uh, just seeing that progress over the, these last six years of you continuing to excel and grow is really inspiring to myself, and I'm sure anyone that wants to get started in a video. Thank you, you know I appreciate I mean? that. So if I'm so if I had, if I just started in the video and I was like, okay, what do I do? How do I find my first client? Um, what are my first steps? What would you tell me? Oh, that's that's a tough question. Um, I mean, I kind of just fell into it because the first big gig with Priest. He was just like posted a Facebook uh, status and yeah. was like, yo, looking for a videographer. I'm like, all right, I got you. 
and I hit them up and it just kind of snowballed after that. But to get your first clients, I mean, the best way that I would recommend is just to email them, send them a message on Facebook or Instagram, mm -hmm. just to like hit them up. Be like, yo, I'm trying to get started, trying to do awesome stuff. Yeah. I would love to do like work trade thing or even for free. Yeah. Um, I gotcha. mean, even now I do a ton of free work because there's like amazing stuff to be had. Like yeah. today I was filming with Elevated Hearts with Molly Neen and, and the whole squad. And that's where we just walked around Denver giving out um, gift cards to people who we, who it looked like they would need that awesome. um, in their day. Yeah. And that kind of stuff is always awesome for me to do because it just like brings everything down to a level of like not expecting to get paid because it's a small thing right yeah. now. And it's giving back to the community. Agreed. Um, and we're planning on way more stuff like just like way bigger stuff yeah of just handing, handing out gift cards of course it's just you're not you're looking at a long-term yes. long-term relationship exactly yeah my my always my uh, philosophy has always been especially getting started and everything or meeting new people was you know free is the gateway to getting paid so you know when i first got started in a video or anything i'm trying to do is like hey look you know if we can't do trade work i'm down to do free work for you because i want to continue to build this relationship yeah because i know this is going to take me to a place where i've never been before Definitely. in general so yeah, I 100 percent agree with you. I think, uh, you know, anyone getting started in a video, me being that I'm, you know, fairly new to video, been doing it for three, going on four years now. Um, it's been like a year, two years. I'm starting to get paid, so I'm really nice. continuing to build my brand as mm -hmm. well. Obviously, you know, you being one of my mentors and Connor as well, doing 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 your guys' you. thing. So that's awesome, man. Definitely. So where do you see where you see yourself in the next, you know? couple months or a year with you know building this company and going forward with your business couple of months I definitely I wouldn't say I see myself but what I'm going to work my ass off for yeah. is higher paid number one higher paid gigs mm -hmm. even though a lot of people say it's not about the money it's not about the gear it is if you have solid content yes. if you just have like minimal content you're gonna get minimal payments you're gonna get minimal gear you're gonna get minimal hustle for that video if you have all the right puzzle pieces that have amazing content, amazing people behind it, the money will follow. Yes. Like, and that money will be high paying gigs no matter what. Hmm. Um, so in the next couple of months, I want to focus on getting those bigger gigs because with those higher budgets, people are able to spend it on locations, on actors, on like, like concepts really to like, to say messages in their videos instead of just like the normal do a couple performance scenes and that's really about it kind yeah of thing. Um, which I'm I'm all about but I mean I also do want to focus on more creative stuff I want to have something to say that's why we got into this thing yep um, in the next couple of years I I just want to travel a lot yeah I'm pretty sure who doesn't right the fuck <laughs> out yo <laughs> I want to go see some shit yo like Namibia Namibia. <laughs> Everyone look up Namibia, in case you don't know what that is. Eastern <laughs> Africa, just below the... Because I didn't know what it was when, I, when he told me. I, I thought he was saying it is Namibia or west something. It is of South Africa, so... That's the goal. Travel somewhere where you don't know how to pronounce the name. Namibia. Namibia. I know how to say the name, but I'm still wanting to go there. Okay, exactly. Well, for you guys that don't know how to say it. Place also, to go. go back to Thailand. Oh my god, I've been having... Yeah, the crawls, yo. Today. Bad. So you make some dope travel videos too, then? I do. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, I, th I think so. I'm asking you. Do you think you do? I mean, I love. I mean, even though I love taking photos and videos while traveling, like I'd much rather. I just want to be there. Yeah. I want to experience. I want to meet new people, experience new places, and just like completely go out of the norm of what's what I've grown up with. Yeah. Like growing up in the mountains, like nobody's gonna be having a food cart like a mile long <laughs> with like 7,000 7-Elevens in their country, like Thailand. For real, wow, like, 7,000. Like seeing that kind of stuff is mind blowing. Wow. Going to other national parks in other countries, like we, like as Americans, because we weren't Thai, we had to pay twice wow. the amount that Thais had to get into the national park. Really? Like those little experiences, hanging back off of the tuk-tuks, all these amazing things, just like, just, it's all little things that make life amazing, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like those, exp like going to Thailand was a big thing, but it was more just like being, like meeting all those new people, seeing all those markets, 
seeing the night markets is like insane to me. Right. Like this has been going on for hundreds of years and I've just, just now realized Real. like like we, you can see it in history book and like online all that kind of stuff. But until you're actually there exactly. experiencing it, you have exactly. no idea. Exactly. Yeah. Like no when you were in Laos, you're just like, this is nuts. Yeah, this is, yeah, sure? well, like, yeah, it was probably the same thing. Completely different world. When, it's when, awesome. When, yeah, it's crazy. I love traveling. That's where I want to be. Like, 100%. Yeah, and doing what you love and being able to travel. Like, yeah. So you don't stuff. work anything else, right? You don't work a job for anyone. You just do all your video nope. stuff. I'm completely sustainable yeah. with what I do now. It's not like I'm, make, I'm not making... Hundreds of thousands. Racks. I'm, not, I'm not making racks yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I can survive. But uh, I mean, I'm still young in the game, as a lot of people like to say and all that. <laughs> <laughs> so, that so for the audience watching, how old are you? 22. 22 years old, traveling the world, like working attention. for himself. Traveling the world. <laughs> like that's <laughs> literally the goal that you know I strive for, that everyone is striving for. You know what I mean? So. How do you feel being in that position where you're actually doing what you love, doing what you enjoy, and you're, you don't have to work for anyone else? You're able to travel the world and kind of do what you do. So I could say that, oh, I'm super blessed, hashtag blessed, and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> but I'm a very naive person. <clears throat> like, I, I, I hardly ever talk about things I don't know, but when like people talk about like you saying you're, you're, I'm a mentor of yours, I, one, never knew that, and two, like that's hard for me to like absorb and like consume because... Yeah. Like, I don't see my, myself as that. Because, hmm. like, I've always just been behind the camera filming other people talking about amazing stuff, yeah. doing amazing things. And I just, like, people are like, you do great stuff. And, like, even though I love when people say that, like, I want people to more have a conversation about what I'm, like, taking photos and videos of. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So, like, when I hear that kind of stuff, it's like, what? It's kind of <laughs> weird, you know? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I mean, so I as, completely forgot you know, the question. Well, no, well, that's, that's okay because I like that you brought that up because I want to ask you now, as but, you know, me tell. Go ahead. What what you were talking about of like being 22 and like traveling and being yeah. sustainable, it's awesome to me. It's like I'm super stoked about it. Um, but like I do have to deal with a lot of shit. Yeah, a lot it's of, not like, easy. No, it's, it's not it's, fucking it's not, easy like, in the business. Like a, like a couple of days ago, somebody was like, "Looks like you're traveling a lot, doing all this crazy stuff." It's like. I mean, I traveled like maybe five times this year. It looks like I've traveled a lot, yeah. But that's just because when you see those posts on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all that kind of stuff, you see that one time and then you completely forget about the next that person and what they're doing until the next time you see their post. Hmm. And then the next time you see their status, it's like, oh, this person is doing this all the time. Yeah. Because the last time I thought about it, that's what they're doing, right? <laughs> yeah. So the mind just automatically fills that gap of like, this is just what they do all the time. There's a lot of people who make that happen of like traveling and killing it all the time. Yes. But the majority of people, like most of the time they're at home just going down on editing, just getting into it, nailing it. And once, maybe twice a week, they're just like out shooting every single minute of the day. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's not an everyday thing. It's, For yourself. It's like, exactly. Okay. Um, as of right now, but like it's a consistent like... The stuff that people don't see, like the editing and like being up oh, till yeah. 4 a.m. and trying to figure out transitions and effects. Well, that's what the problem with social media. It's just media, so like. Un <laughs> like, like yeah, like I'll do cool things once in a while, but like most of the time it's like <laughs> I'm I literally just, grinding. I'm just working. Exactly. Yeah. Like hitting people up or like figuring out new places to go. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Huh. Interesting. I like that point that you brought up because I feel like a lot of you know, business owners or entrepreneurs, you know, really post, just post on Instagram or Facebook saying that, you know, they live this glorious life and they're hustling and they're doing all these things, posting nice cars and stuff like that. But, you know, it's not the, it's not their real life. It's not the yeah. story that portray. And I feel like on, on my part, when I see that, I don't want my audience, I don't want anyone in my friend's audience to feel that way just because that's not the reality of the situation. Right. You know what I mean? I want to show, me personally, I want to show my audience that, yeah, I'm living this cool life, I'm living these cool things, but... I want to be the behind the scenes stuff. I'm literally working all you know every day. I'm finding clients. I'm yeah. editing. I'm doing everything like that. Exactly. So I like that you brought that up because you know a lot of entrepreneurs or individuals like ourselves, they don't want to paint that picture because they want to be viewed as a certain person. Yeah. Like they're perfect. Yeah. And that's even worse for their audience because they feel like, oh, how am I supposed to live that life? Because it just looks like it's all glamorous. You know yeah. what I mean? So Definitely. I like that. I respect that. It's pretty Thank you. And the big thing about like this massive attention seeking like society we have right now is that most people just see it as like 
post a couple of pictures, get a lot of likes, done. Yeah. Like, I'm always stoked when I hit, like, 80 likes. Yeah. Like, people <laughs> may seem like that's low, and it is. But for me, it's great because then it shows me what people who are following me like to see. Yeah. Um, even though I have, like, if, like, I'll post a travel thing and I'll get, like, 80 likes, even though I have a lot of, like, rappers who follow me. Because it's like, like they're not the ones liking it. It's the ones who love to travel, who love to go out, like Travis Sims, Hallie, Co Connor, Sam, like all these amazing people yeah. like to see that stuff. And that's the stuff that gets the most attention. So that's the stuff that I want to focus on. Exactly. So yeah, um, I was just going to ask. So you base your content, so you, you pretty much reverse engineer what, you know, what your audience is responding to. Right. And you're like, okay, well, my audience like this, so let me create more content exactly. about this. Exactly. Genius. And like a lot of people would see these big Instagram famous people be like, oh, this person's getting so many likes because they're posting with a cup that they just got paid a thousand dollars to post on their yeah. Instagram account. And I could do that for a thousand dollars and get as many likes and attention, but it's like, they're only gonna run out with, they're gonna burn themselves out in two to three years. Well, exactly, what is, and what does that show for your brand? Exactly. Like, that's your, I like mean. Just willing to shell out some cheap money to some kid on the internet because exactly. they're holding your cup up. Mm -hmm. like. I want to, like, if you want to go for that, great, that's what you want to do. But I want to go for, like, content that's, like, interesting and unique and that starts conversations but also is, like, exciting to look at. Yeah. Exciting to watch. Something that, like, supplants, I not necessarily supplants ideas, but more, like, gets you thinking about stuff. Hmm. Okay. So, I don't know. It's just, like, a whole bunch of huge stuff that you can just go down a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're 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 very intellectual, and you know you read a lot, and you just you're a very smart smart dude in general. Thank you. So, putting that in your content is is uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It, like you're supposed to do that, right? You know you you want to because that's you. That's, yeah. You know that that is Leland. You know Definitely. to be that individual. So, I like that man. Thank you. I appreciate one, uh, that. one thing I wanted to recap on a little bit earlier that you said about you know me mentioning to you that you know you were my one of my mentors and everything like that. As you start to grow and excel as an individual, as a brand, as a company, do you see yourself becoming more of that, you know, that mentor, that teacher that people are gonna, you know, look up to you for advice and stuff like that? Or um, not necessarily maybe that you, you want to, but do you see yourself, your kind of brand going that way in general? I, I wouldn't necessarily say that I'm like focusing on that, but I have noticed throughout like certain moments in my life, yeah. like getting into motocross, like mm -hmm. when I could afford it, um, and doing shoots with the camera that I have and getting into painting when I was like 10 years old, a lot of people gravitated towards giving me attention. Yeah. I didn't like the attention in the way of like, oh, give me all this attention, I'm like loving this because people are giving me attention. I liked it because I could transfer and kind of like help others out to do what they want to do. Like a lot of people would like come up to my camera and like with a glide camera like oh what is that like how's it what do you, like why do you have that it's like well it keeps it stable yeah do you want to hold it like i'm always telling people do you want to hold this because it's fun to experience yeah like i'm always trying to like bring people on board hmm. to be a part of it not yeah. to be like a part of my ego not ego but my but narcissistically part of me hmm. right yeah like i don't want people to you're willing to teach someone no matter exactly what, what like if is. somebody comes up to me in like yeah. an interested way like what are you doing i'll be like this is what I'm doing, but I want to see you do it because it'd be because it's just fun. Yeah. Like I know that's fun, and I know that you would have fun, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so like, when I would notice people looking at me, I'd be like, "Do you want to try this? Because it's super fun. It's like, go ahead. Yeah. Like go for it." And I love seeing people like just pick up the camera and, or like doing what they want because they saw that I was having fun with it. Yeah. Like I'm I'm not like I want to just really reinforce the fact that I'm not doing it because I'm gonna get attention is because they're having an experience. Yeah, you generally wanna see exactly. them enjoying themselves. Exactly, like I want to see people experience their own life Yeah. because they're witnessing something new, they're like meeting somebody new, they're doing a new thing in their life. And I'm like, here you go, here's a new thing, onto the next one, right? Yeah. It's like going to new places. Like, just always amazing You just gotta experience, people. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. That's what I wanna focus on in yeah. life. If I was that's to amazing. Be, if I was to be a mentor, that's amazing. Or a I, I've teacher. never, I've never heard that from you, and that's that sounds like really inspiring that you're, you're saying that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like how does that, sure. how does that feel to yourself? Um, I mean, it's something that I've like always known about yeah. myself, um, but I've never really talked about it because it's kind of weird 
because I hate talking about myself. <laughs> but I was well, like, might as well do this. I would say a lot of people do, but people love talking about themselves. So it's a different. I mean, it's a different. It's at definitely, a point, it gets really annoying for me. It's like, oh god, I keep saying I and me and <laughs> ugh, right? Well, yeah, but well, I mean, you brought it you is life. Me. It is your life. You know what I mean? Like exactly. at the end of the day, like it is you know your type of right. life. Um, anyone watching right now, if you do have any questions, anything, drop them in the Facebook Live or anything like that, so we can definitely answer your yeah. questions as well <laughs> with this podcast. Definitely. What are, what's your What are your goals? What are you trying to? You're moving out to Vegas. That's yeah. Fun. So yeah. So I'm, I'm moving to Vegas. That. I'm moving to Vegas in four months. You're You're interviewing me on my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Yeah. So I'm definitely moving out. I'm moving out to Vegas. It was a decision I made um, a couple months before, uh, a couple months ago. Um, announced it to the world on my birthday, which was July 29th. You know, I'm really at a point in my life, I'm 22 years old, and I feel like, yeah, right? <laughs> and I feel like, you know, I'm, it's, I'm personally ready to, you know, travel the world, experience the world, see new people, um, experience new things. Um, I just want to, you know, have a life where I don't regret anything going right. forward. I, uh, I don't want to be on my deathbed saying, like, damn, I should have traveled or should have traveled. Should have gotten Bibia. I should have, I should have <laughs> gotten Bibia, yeah, however you say that. Um, so yeah, man, I, uh, I decided to move to Vegas. My friend, uh, my, one of my good friends, Lawrence, is out there right now. Uh, he moved there in January. Uh, he just got his own place in June. So nice. I feel like it's definitely, I, th I, I believe like the universe speaks to you in def many different ways. Yeah. And you know, that was one of those things where, you know, like I got to take this, I got to take this leap of faith. Yeah. You know, worst comes to worst, I can always move back here. You know what I mean? Exactly. I can always move back yeah. to Denver. It's not, it's not a big deal. So, you know, I'm going to probably stay in uh, Vegas for a year planning on the year. If it's going really good there, I do plan on staying a little bit longer, just, you know, going with the flow. Um, if I feel like it's time to go, I'm going to go straight to California. And, uh, yeah, I was really trying to build my, um, you know, my following for, you know, my brand with, you know, the alchemist mindset and really yeah. um, showing the world that there's more to life than just, you know, just not doing what you love. You know what I mean? Just really, yeah. I believe, what I'm really trying to do, and this is a weird concept, what I'm trying to do is... You know, all these, you know, rappers, actors, all like that, like, they're the one that people look up to and people see, you know what I mean? But I feel like a lot of them, not saying every, all of them, but a lot of them aren't really preaching a positive message mm -hmm. and saying, like, you know, I'm just going to, for rappers, you know, most, you know, what, what do most rappers rap about? You know, it's, you know, money, it's girls, it's yeah. nice cars, it's houses like that, which is fine, but I personally would say teach it in a way where they're not romantic about it. You know yeah. it, that they know that's just one of those things that, like, I don't need this to be happier, to right. be successful. You know what I mean? Sure. So I'm trying to build a brand, not trying to. I'm going to build a brand that, you know, that educates people, and you know, it, I'm a mentor in people, but make it cool. Yeah. You know, obviously, cool is a subjective thing, but if I can get on a on a pedestal or a big enough audience where I'm like one of these rappers or actors like that, you know, I'm really I'm a really cool guy. I'm really dope due right. to the you know the, the you know the kids and everything like that, but I'm preaching a positive message yeah. to the world. You know, what I mean that's really what I'm trying to build right now. So definitely, I feel like you know traveling. Like our uh, our brands have the same um, mindset when it comes to uh, like creating content that's like meaningful. Yes. Uh, me and my friend Henry Ward, who's like, then I will reach out for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it's not just like oh we have this shoot. Do you want? It? It's more just like shit. That last minute needs some help here. <laughs> so mentorship program, no. If you want to come to my shoots, yes. Same thing with me. Yeah, uh, I don't really have any mentorship programs or anything like that. I love to add anyone on the team that is willing to work hard and willing to put in the work and everything like that. But I want to continue about what you're saying about I Henry. I forgot what I was saying. Um, what was you mentioned saying? you're talking about Henry and Henry. Henry yes. yes. Uh, Sorry. Workshop. Back. The creating moments of conscious existence, capturing moments of conscious existence, um, is that I want to create, con I don't, I hate saying that, those two words, but I want to make photos and videos where <clears throat> it's sh like, sublim like supplants ideas and actions in the people who are viewing it, the audience. Mm -hmm. So like, when I say supplant, I mean like, if you're watching a video about camping and they're drinking beer, yeah. you see them picking, like a quick shot of them picking up the empty beer cans and throwing it away. That will, that's what like mind control is, right? No, yeah. It's like when so, you see yeah. it on the screen, when you see somebody else doing it, you're going to copy those actions. Yes. When you hear somebody with an accent talking, you're going to be like, all right, I'm going to start talking like that. Yeah. But that's your, like your subconscious telling you to do that. Yes. You, you're not, like, 
You can be like, oh, I'm going to be a good citizen to dance. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Like, you can't do that, but at the end of the day, you're still going to be picking up these messages from videos. Mm -hmm. That's why, like, all these horrible, dumb videos are, like, fight videos and all that kind of stuff. That's why fights are so popular is because the, yeah, people see what... these fight videos and, like, this violence and horrible shit online, and then when it comes down to one of those situations in their own life, that's how they're going to respond. Hmm. Um, so if, like, people see images and photo and videos that have those moments of supplanting ideas and how to um, deal with situations and how to clean shit up, right? Yeah. Then they'll just do it by nature. Mm -hmm. um, like, it's not technically an organic thought, but it's a healthy thought. Instead of those fight videos that everybody watches, it's like when you watch an awesome video about people picking up trash or like helping the community out, like, I'm going to go help somebody out. Yeah. It's just like, I'll... Yeah, it's, it's completely... definitely a positive brand. It's a positive message. Yeah. And, that, and you know, that's hard. And I feel, I mean, like I said, let me know your perspective on it. It's like, how do you, other than like, sub, you know, subconsciously putting it in your videos or your content, anything like that, how do you personally think you're going to push that message to, you know, to people? You know, being that if rappers and all these things that are doing it, like people that look up to, like, how do you, how do you plan on standing out in the crowd and, you know, doing that? So that's more where it comes into brands and artists hitting me up who also want to spread a message. Gotcha. Um, and it also comes down to what their budget will allow us to do. Mm -hmm. um, like I will work, like if somebody has an amazing idea, small budget, I will attack it because it has a great message. If it has a big budget, but like horrible idea, then I'll try and give an idea for them. If it's like an actually good song, something that can be, um, put onto the visual medium that can be something that is like exciting to watch. Yeah. Then I'll be like, here's some cool ideas, something exciting to watch, a little bit different perspective, more experimental instead of like trying to build a whole story kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but that's where I'm gonna start weeding a lot, weeding out a lot of people of, I just wanna be in front of a wall and start rapping. Gotcha. Um, Cause that's just, it's just boring. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I 100% agree. And then with brands, I'd be like, well, your clothing brand is like this, so, I want to help build these like this video campaign around this message, or I want to do these photos like this mm -hmm. um, to help spread this kind of message, um, and that's what I really want to go for. Gotcha. Is building brands and artists, their videos and photos that have meaning, have su like saturation in them, gotcha. have substance, right? Mm -hmm. um, instead of just like, oh, let's take some clothing photographs that everybody has seen like make it look all hipster and like and all basic exactly yeah um so that's that's what i really want to try so then let me ask you i'm gonna ask you this question too so as you as your brand evolves and starts to you know get bigger and bigger with everything you do do you see yourself not working with rappers or whatever brands that aren't cohesive with your brand so say for example like your, your brand is obviously pushing a positive message out there and everything like that Say, for example, if you have a rapper that isn't preaching that same message, mm -hmm. do you see yourself weeding yourself out to like, no, I don't work with that, I don't want to work with that person because that brand isn't cohesive with mine, or is it one of those things where I want to help any client out? It's, it kind of depends. Like, that's a, like, there's too many variables to be like, this is what I would do and wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm down to work with almost anybody, unless if they're like a racist or like some horrible person. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even there, I would be like, Let's do an interview. Like, I want to hear your perspective, uh -huh. even though it might be like um, not the best. But if it's like an artist that just does the same basic um, cars and stuff, that kind of stuff, I want to like push away from that. Mm -hmm. But if like there's an opening, they're like, all right, come in. Just, it's like a paycheck, basically. Gotcha. Um, okay. Like I'll tr I won't treat them as a paycheck. I'll be like. Tr trying to do some cool ideas, something exciting, mm -hmm. maybe a fun edit. But other than that, I'm not gonna full like throw myself at the project if they're going to be putting like not all like putting excitement behind their music gotcha. or behind their brand. If it's just like I'm making cool clothes, it's like okay, mm -hmm. like what like what do you is there like a, a lifestyle that you're trying to push? Is there like are, are your clothes made from like recyclable stuff? Um, but if it's just like a basic client, then I'll be like, yeah, I'll work for you, but 
You're and you don't be... and you don't think that would affect your brand at all? Um I don't believe so because if it if I were to have a brand big enough to be like plastered as one type of thing, then I would only be doing those type of videos and photos. Gotcha. Um but like right now it's like more like a solo gig, so hmm. something to be interesting. Adult. I like that. <laughs> I like that. So um, we're having some some questions come in. Nice. Leave. Like what? I don't know. I'm reading. Let's see. How you get your message out in a quick manner? Yes, it is. Like fine videos. Take the time to watch actual videos with a true plot with a message. Now the message has to be combined into shorts and. The message. How are you going to capture it? So. so I want to go first. I'm gonna go first. Okay, right, go first. for it. I'm gonna go first. So, uh, so my perspective. So, Crusher Jones. Uh, just so everyone knows, um, his question was pretty much with um, with how social media is and how fast people attentions, you know, attentions are after when they're scrolling through the feed on Facebook, Instagram, whatever it may be. How um, how are you gonna capture their attention with longer videos? Uh, my perspective that I've always known and you know learned from Gary Vaynerchuk and a lot of things is. If you're if the content is good, people are gonna watch it. You know what I mean? Exactly. It doesn't matter yeah. if it's because uh, it's just look at Star Wars, how long those movies are, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or Lord of the Rings. Those are two, three hour long movies, yeah. but the content, the story is superb, it's amazing, and yeah. people are gonna watch it no matter what. So to you, Crusher, and anyone else watching this, from my perspective is if you have a great story, a great message, a great video, whatever it may be, just a great product in general, then people are gonna watch it no matter what. Yeah. Um, I have pe I see people that have 30 second videos, minute videos that are just horrible, and you don't they don't watch it for the first they watch the first five seconds. They're like, nah, I hate this. Yeah. And then I have like I said, there's videos that are hours long that people will watch the whole thing because it's re either related to them mm -hmm. or it's great content. So that's just my side of it. Going off that, I 100% agree with that. Is that um, people are willing to take the time to learn a new perspective yep. to learn about new people and experiences regardless of how long it's gonna take. Mm -hmm. Because even though there are just like shit posts, posters who just like make all these dumb videos about nothing, have no message behind them, they don't have any script, they, whatever. Like there are, there's an audience for that. And it's just like, it's not a big audience, but yeah. like th there's a solid part. But the most, the majority of videos that do well have some kind of meaning. The, mm -hmm. pe the videos that get talked about the most are like, check out this awesome video It has this great message, um, great new perspective, new like spotlight on something that I didn't even know about, that kind of can stuff. can hit your emotions. Exactly. Whether, it it's, hits, whether it's funny or sad or anything like that, right? Exactly, because yeah. it, it taps into what you see as the most beneficial in your life, but also something that you've always been passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, so I completely agree with like, it's not it's not people's attention spans. And I don't I don't I don't like that stereotypical people's attention spans are getting low. They are, if it's shit quality and shit content. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Right. Yeah, you're right. I agree. Yeah. Like there's a big portion of people that are just like, who literally will not watch a video if it's more than thirty seconds, which is like even though it's a small amount, it's there's still people that do that. But the majority of people will like watch something if they laugh, if they cry, if they get like an emotion from it. Yeah, there, and there's so many like tactical points to it too, you know, to what your copy is and how your, how your thumbnail is. Like there's so many like yeah. those things like that, but the main concept and the main thing is have a great story, have a great product and people are gonna watch it. Yeah. And then, um, so he, and then he said, so building your idea with shorts could be an option. Not exactly. What's that, which one? He just crusher. My question is how are you gonna capture? No, it's the same one. Oh. So he's like building your idea with shorts could be an option. Oh yeah, well I mean yeah. Well, um, with short-term videos, I'm assuming is what you're asking. Um, yeah, I mean like I said, there's so many different ways. If say you released a, a video every day, a quick 30-second, 15-second video that you know at the end of the week became one long video or something like that, like you can really capture someone's attention within you know five sec, five ten seconds if it's if it's relatable to the person and like I said, it's good content. Yep, so. for sure, completely agree. Like you can nail it with like those 10 to 30 second videos with like awesome messages, meeting new people. But when you get into the realms of like 
more in-depth content, yeah. people are going to want you to flesh out that kind of stuff. They, they want more from it. Yep. Um, that's why Great Big Story from, um, that's on YouTube and Facebook, their three to two minute videos, or two, like, two to like ten minute videos, get like tens of millions of views. Oh, because yeah, they, definitely. Because they, they go to like Africa to this guy who has like chickens guarding his house. <laughs> yeah, like some, like, some people crazy. are going to be like, I want to know more about this guy who has chickens <laughs> guarding his house. Yeah. What? Crazy stuff. Uh -huh. And then the uh, people who scuba dive under Barcelona. No, uh, somewhere in Germany. I forget the name. Um, and there's these catacombs filled with like warm water, not catacombs, but underwater caves under the city, and people just explore them. Like, I, just, what? Like, so just oh, some that's awesome. Showing people a perspective that they never thought they would have seen exactly. before. Exactly. Nice. So before we before we wrap it up, um, I'm gonna start. Wrap it up. I'm having a great time. <laughs> yeah, I know, Keep right? Going. Yeah, yeah. Shoot, we could talk all night. <laughs> all right. Um, I think it's been like I don't even know how long we've been shooting for. I'm about to be an hour. No. Um, just for audience wise, and just gotta keep it, gotta keep it cohesive. But you know, my question, my question is, and I'm gonna start asking this on every podcast: is what do you believe the alchemist mindset means to you? Like, what is the alchemist mindset? I would say, personally, yes, personally. Um, I want you, I want your, like, but your with belief. like knowing how you operate, because holy shit, um, you were just always on it. I would say, be the first one in and the last one out. Like, if somebody needs to move a bunch of gear, help them move all that gear. Regardless, of, like, if you're the top guy, like, the director of a video, mm -hmm. or if you're just a PI, PA getting coffee for the director. If people need help moving gear or, like, getting stuff from one place to another, help out. Yeah. Because not only are you putting yourself in front of more eyes, but you're also showing that you're a worker. You're willing to, like, drop your arbitrary hier hier hierarchy mm -hmm. ideal of your job on set or whatever you do in the workplace as this is work that needs to get done and like might as well do it because I don't know what else to do so yeah get it done and then production just goes by much faster <laughs> work gets done much faster much more production happens when everybody works together instead of just like having these tears of who works where like, oh, I'm um, a boss, so I can't do it. I'm not supposed to exactly. do it. Exactly. Um, and that's where, like, true leadership actually comes into is, like, when you're willing to help out somebody who is perceived as having a lower job. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, first one in, last one out. Nice. That's probably the best I could say. Um, no, that's great. I, I agree. But, awesome. yeah, that's a, that's a, been a big thing, um, like, with me working is that, always trying to get the most amount of shots um especially this year yeah it's been much more of a focus point last year was kind of wishy-washy but uh yeah just trying to get as much into the whatever you're doing as possible okay nice so where can they follow you at uh oh god which one um facebook just leland schmidt that's it just my name leland uh instagram and twitter at Leland Schmidt underscore. Dang. That's exciting. where they're going to find your videos and stuff like that? Yep. That's exactly where you can find them. Um, and then YouTube is just youtube.com slash Leland Schmidt. Other than that, I hate talking about this. Bam. So we out here. <laughs> um, everyone watching, thank you. Thank you for watching this. I want to thank Leland again for you coming on to the fun. show. It was super dope. I like having you on here. Like I said, I love this is from a selfish standpoint. I definitely wanted to hear more about you. So this, is, per this is perfect anyway. I appreciate it. I didn't know, you know that you... We're like so stoked. And I was like, I mean, all right. That's why I always hit you up, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'd be right. like, when, when you're shooting, bruh, let me know. Because I'm always reverse engineering everything you do and trying to see what you do. So, really? I'm, yeah, I'm on it. Well, let's keep talking then. All right. Why do we have to end this? <laughs> it's not off camera. So. <laughs> it's off camera. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, tune in next week, uh, next Sunday, 7 p.m. We'll have the next guest on. So.